I can be the answer. Ant Troubleshooting 101, a video I should have made a long time ago given the amount of support queries that come in for this and people experiencing issues when they're first time setting up and trying to get everything working correctly. Even some old hats have some problems. After a long time of no signal drop whatsoever, things will start to change in their environment and they'll be looking for answers. Look, I'll run through a ton of things today that you can check. Even if you're not experiencing any issues at all, it's worth going through every one of these to ensure mid-interval you're not going to have any troubles whatsoever with your power dropping out or signal loss at all. I've covered what ant is in another video already and why you need an ant stick. This will cover what to do if you're actually having some signal drop and what to check on. Now signal loss, if you're not experiencing any signal loss at the moment, think about when you're in the car, you're tuned into Triple M 105.1 and you drive under a bridge. You'll get a temporary loss of signal, a bit of fuzz in the radio and you'll continue to drive on. Now in the car, that's not a problem. On the bike, if you're mid-workout and you need to get that gold star and you get signal fuzz or drop out, all hell will break loose. I know that from personal experience and also Veronica. If she's mid-interval, I'll know if there's been a dropout. So I've had to go through all these thoroughly in all our environments that we've had our setup in to make sure that it all works. And I can guarantee you 99% of these have been solved with the following method. The ant stick itself that you use needs to be a USB 2 compatible ant stick. There's a few older ones floating around, maybe secondhand on eBay that are USB 1. They'll work with a few programs, but definitely not with Zwift. Under Windows, you'll have trouble. Trainer Road, I'm not quite sure, supports them. So make sure your stick is a USB 2 version. You can check on the device itself. Most things you buy out of the stores these days will be USB 2. USB 1 is years old, so you should be right to go there. Double check that though, just to be sure. Whatever program you're using with your Ant stick needs exclusive access to that stick itself. So you can't have any other program running. A common one that people have running is Garmin Express or Garmin Agent that'll run in the background and sync automatically. If that's running, you'll have headaches with things like Zwift and Trainer Road. So ensure that's disabled. Make sure nothing else is using that, uh, using your ant stick at the same time. That should be good to go. The next one is your sensor signal. If you've got a speed sensor, you need to make sure the batteries in these things are fresh. That does impact the distance they will actually send and receive. Here's a little shot of that. You can see there that a low battery really decreases the range. So if you're having no troubles at all today, tomorrow you never know. It may be a little colder and your battery signal drops a little bit. That's why your smoke alarm will always beep at 6am It's when it's the coldest in your house. Batteries don't like the cold weather. So ensure your batteries are fresh. The number one battery to use is the Energizer 2032. Little uh, button batteries there for most of your sensors. If you're using a smart meter or anything that's directly powered into your wall, you don't need to worry about that. But definitely heart rate monitors. Uh, power meters and sensors. Make sure your batteries are nice and fresh. They're only a few dollars each, so that, that's an easy one to tick off. Not all USB ports are created equal. Some USB ports are powered, unpowered, USB 1, USB 2. Depending on the system you're using and the hardware revision, there could be different ports on even next to each other. If you're having trouble with the USB port on your laptop, try the one on the other side and see if that fixes it. If you're using a laptop with a HDMI output right next to your USB port, just watch for signal interference there. You may need a high quality shielded HDMI cable. HDMI is known to be really, really noisy and can interfere with USB. Watch for that, an active USB cable may help with that. Quality USB 2 extension cables or ideally USB 3 certified ones are handy as well. You're looking at a few dollars for a standard non-active cable, which is fine for most environments between two and three meters. If you need to go longer than that, or you're having extreme trouble getting signal from your USB device to your computer. Somebody said the other night they went and bought a active USB cable, which are about three times the price, and it changed their writing entirely. So I jumped in the car, Went down to Officeworks nearby and spent $40. They're quite expensive, these ones, to get myself a super high quality uh, active USB cable. The result, not a lot actually. I ran it through Zwift Eliza to see my dropouts and there was no benefit whatsoever. But if you do live in a really, really noisy environment and you're at your wits end trying to solve your ant signal dropouts, grab yourself one of these cables. You can see they're a little bit thicker than the normal cable. They've got a powered end on them and the, these can go up to 30 or 40 meters. They're crazy lengths. Uh, and super heavy duty. So if you're having a really, really bad time, active USB cable will change your life. Home Wi-Fi can also cause problems with dropouts. If you're running on channels 9 through 12 or 9 through 14, depending on what country you're in, we find that can get in the way of some ant signals. Changing your router or your home Wi-Fi network through channels 1 through 3 usually ensures a lot better experience. I'll put some notes down below of how to get to your router's configuration page, but what you're after is taking it off auto or off 9 through 12 or 9 through 14, changing it to channels 1 or 3 and testing that again. Give that a shot, see how it goes. 
Another tip we've seen online is people putting their USB extension keys inside a plastic bag to make sure they're not sweating all over them. So keeps things healthy and in good nick. In summary, let's have a look at this. Make sure your USB stick is a USB 2 and installed correctly in the correct port. Make sure no other programs are using that USB stick. So Garmin Express, Garmin Agent, nuke those out of the way. Make sure your sensors have a strong battery and to ensure they're nice and close. Make sure you're using the correct USB port. Watch when using the one next to the HDMI cable. May cause interference. If it's not working on one port, try another on the other side. Extension cables, always preferable to use an extension cable. Higher quality, the better. Active, even better again. Check your Wi-Fi signal. Switch to channels one through three. And make sure your little USB plug at the end of the thing is out of the way of any water or getting stomped on and things like that. Now you might say, oh, this doesn't apply to me. Everything works fine. Tomorrow, your neighbor may have a new baby monitor or your kids next door might start using some walkie talkies and you will have interference that any of these things may solve. So that's Ant Troubleshooting 101. Links below, let me know if you've had any other problems or solved any of these problems in a different way or if I've missed anything. We'll do an Ant Troubleshooting 102 in the near future. For now, that should get everyone up and running. Thanks for watching.